This is Jessica. And this is Kelly. And this is the Chasing Brighter podcast. Kelly, I know that we're obsessed with longevity, um, having glowing skin, um, healing our gut, and I love Warrior Strong Wellness products. Um, We love, we talk all the time, the multi-collagen protein powder, the collagen tides and bone broth. But I'm also obsessed with the ashwagandha. Um, It really helps me manage my stress levels and stay calm. Um, Kel, are you adding ashwagandha into your routine, your supplement routine? I am. Jess, you remember I was having all these like stressful, this stressful situation happening with my kitchen reno. And I started taking two of these a day in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I just noticed a level of calmness that um, I'm able to sustain throughout the day that really helps me not feel so anxious. Yeah, I was taking two in the morning and two at night. I stopped taking my two in the morning because I was like, is this really doing something? And then it like my, I feel it, you know, when you wake up and you're stressed, you kind of feel it in your stomach, you feel it in your chest, just taking two in the morning really helps me feel calmer. Um, and if you check it out on warrior strong wellness coupon code chasing brighter, that's one word chasing brighter for 10% off. Hi everybody. Welcome to today's episode. We are so excited today to have a broad wife. Lindsay is an American mom of three who has spent the last 10 years bouncing back and forth from the USA to Europe, traveling and living abroad as an expat. She currently lives in Germany and previously lived in Georgia and Ukraine. She enjoys photography as a hobby and documents her family's family's adventures where we found her um, on Instagram um, at her handle at a broad wife. Welcome, Lindsay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited um, to talk to you today. You're living my dream, so I can live <laughs> me too. for you. Um, unfortunately, uh, my husband has a job that can only be done in the U.S. because I can yeah. do, I'm a mental health therapist, so I can do telehealth and live anywhere. Um, yeah. But he's a, a podiatrist, a foot and ankle doctor, and that's ah, okay. the U.S. thing. Like, it's not... Um, a global situation. Oh, that's interesting. And it's like different, like in different countries, it's different and yeah. has different things and stuff. And so um, you should so look into that more seriously, Jess. I, I could did. see it yeah. going abroad. Okay. Yeah. Try harder. So I uh, <laughs> can't go to like, it's called property in Canada. And I forget what it is in England. Um, and then he would have to speak another language, right? Because those yeah. are the two options. And so <laughs> like, yeah, that one's a tricky one. <laughs> Yeah, he would need to be pretty fluent in the language for us to go. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so um, so thank you so much for coming. Um, I would love to hear just like a little bit about yourself and what inspired you um, to start documenting your travels. Yeah, so um, about 10 years ago, my husband and I moved abroad for the first time, also to Germany, but a um, different part of Germany. And that was the first time either of us had been to Europe before. And so we got here and people talk about how easy it is to travel in Europe. And we just started traveling and the travel bug bit us really hard. And that was pre-Instagram days. Instagram, I think, came out while we were over there. But um, eventually, just through our travels and adventures, I just got really excited about travel and also very curious. And so when Instagram came around, that just became kind of an avenue for me to share what we had done, um, you know, connect with other people who also love travel and, and also as an opportunity for me to learn from them. So that's kind of where it came out of. Yeah, I think that's so true. I think um, that seems, I mean, Kelly and I are both from Kansas and we know, right? Kelly, a lot of people have never left. I mean, our dad's friend had never left Kansas, right? So yeah. I know it's like, what? You're traveling all over. Like, is that accessible? Um, yeah. And uh, with like the Euro rail and, yeah. um, and then all the, the currency, the Euro, right? It's yeah. very, it's much different to travel all over. So it sounds like you yeah. did that just to kind of, I don't know, show other people um, that it can be done and it's possible. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. That it's, you know, it is doable. And we had our first um, child while we were in Germany the first time. So we went from, you know, just a young married couple to now we have this baby and, you know, how are we going to make this work with this baby everywhere? But it is doable and um, it can seem intimidating, but um, I think you just have to get started. And that was part of the motivation also is just to kind of, 
give that little boost of encouragement to show that, yeah, you can, you can do it too. It's fun. And you then pretty quickly after, um, starting Instagram or pretty quickly after traveling, you started having a family. So then it was pretty quickly family travel. Yeah, it was pretty much from the get go family travel. I mean, I think we traveled for about, you know, a year, just the two of us. And then we had our daughter. And so then from then on, it's been all all with kids, you know, part of the downside of this lifestyle and living over here is we don't have family very accessible to us to come in for a weekend to take the kids. So yeah, pretty much everything we do is is with our kids with the kids. And how old are they now? So my daughter is just about to turn 10 and our middle son is about seven and a half. And then our youngest just turned four. Oh, okay. Oh, so you're hitting the sweet spot though. You know, it's kind of like, we are like that light at the end of the tunnel. We're creeping out of those toddler days and um, he's able to do a lot more now kind of shed the nap time. We aren't traveling with a stroller anymore. We can have just like a little booster for a car seat. So it's definitely um, getting easier. So prior to that, you were navigating travel. It's like, gosh, I forget about that. I have three, but my oldest just turned 15 last week. Oh, daughter and two boys. And so she's 15. Oh, yeah, me too. And then I have a 15, 12, and eight. And so uh, we're cruising. We're cruising now. Um, But it's, my gosh, I forget all the stuff you have you know even like clothes and diapers oh my gosh so many changes of clothes and then like my middle son he was bottle fed so it was like the bottles and the formula and the snack containers I mean it really I like I I think like the zero to six month range is actually pretty good because they sleep so much and you can take them anywhere and they don't they don't complain really you know it's like feed them and they're pretty happy um, but then you hit that toddler stage and that's really hard because they're wiggly. so temperamental. Yes. They want to move. They don't sit still. Oh man. So yeah, now we're kind of, uh, I, 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 I hate to jinx myself, but I think we're at the tail end of that. So yeah, so pretty. Yeah. yeah, no, I think that's, that's so amazing. And so, um, did you travel a lot as a child yourself? A little bit, not not like this. Um, my family, we would go camping every summer. We did a few trips to Disneyland or like cross country trips to see aunts and uncles and um, my grandmother. Uh, you know, I think there was a trip to Canada once because I grew up near Seattle um, and like one trip to Mexico. But it was more like you know, a big trip every once in a few years. And then it was like trips to see family. Yeah. And so for you, do you have a goal? Um, You know, we want to go someplace once a month. Is if there's time off or like how often are you traveling? Um, yeah, I would say I, I kind of aim for once a month with the, with the new caveat of in the winter. Now we sit still because we live in the mountains and um, everybody in my family, except for me is obsessed with skiing. So it's like the winter is the ski season. So we sit here and um, we ski. But yeah. other than that, I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, once a month is, a, is, is good. Um, if I can, if I can make it happen with school and work. And you're, so you're um, in the cabin drinking hot cocoa or cider while they're mm-hmm. out. Yes. I find my other mom friends who also do not like to ski and we hang out and do the, the apres ski in the lodge <laughs> or sometimes like my kids were on a, a ski team this winter. So toward the tail end of the season, the snow in the valley has melted off. So then we're going for walks and stuff while the kids are at ski practice and then picking yeah. them up. Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing? I, I think that's, I always, so I have friends that are big skiers and I'm mm-hmm. like, oh gosh, why aren't we a ski family? And then uh, we went up to Park City, my husband and I went up years ago and I was like, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. I'm like, this is horrible. And I was like, it's okay to not be a skier. It's fine. Yes, it is okay. It is okay. It's a lot of gear. It's a lot of like schlepping. It's a, it's a big like time investment at the beginning to get everybody 
to the point where they're fairly like independent skiers. Once you get there, you know, then now we're pretty smooth. But like, I mean, there was a lot of long days in order to get the kids skiing. And when we live in the mountains, it makes sense, right? But like, if you don't live there where you have the access all the time, like, that's a lot. Well, and I think it's definitely, I think in Europe, they ski much younger and much more often. We have a, a friend that's a professor, and I, I cannot think of the country that they were um, they were in for a little bit. And their little babies were just I think they I think they have five kids, and they all were on skis, and they were ski yes. jumping, and they were doing yes. all this amazing stuff. And I'm like, oh, we don't do that here, not from a judgy perspective, but we just it's like no one's doing yeah. that. Here. Yeah. yeah, I mean, definitely there are like two year olds on skis, you know, skiing circles around adults who are learning. It's it's pretty amazing to see. <laughs> so cool. And you had mentioned school. So what's yeah. the school situation there? Is it just very similar to the States five days a week or? Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty much a normal school schedule for us. And so we have school breaks every once in a while. But um, and luckily, our school is fairly understanding about pulling the kids out for traveling and stuff. And they're pretty flexible. But um, yeah, it's just like a typical schedule. Yeah. And how are you finding, you know, if you're going to countries that you know it's not a language that you guys speak i think one of the things as an american i joke with a lot of people that when i took my kids to mexico for spring break that this was like complete training wheels for them right like even just saying hola and gracias and just like the idea but like i'm prepping them to go to europe someday i want to do that and how do you how do you navigate that in terms of some of those countries that you don't know the language as well well I've had a lot of practice that feeling out of my comfort zone. So, I mean, there is a lot of just discomfort that you kind of have to sit with if you don't Mm -hmm. speak the language. But I have noticed, honestly, a difference from the first time we were living in Germany to now. I would say the amount of people who speak English has definitely increased. I mean, we are so fortunate that we are English speakers because that is the default Mm -hmm. second language for so many other countries. So... It's really it's it it does seem intimidating, but like just learning little greetings and we have so many tools now like Google Translate is super helpful. I mean, you can point your phone at a menu and it'll translate it on the spot. I mean, just helps so much. But just knowing that it's going to be a little uncomfortable maybe sometimes, but that's okay. (laughs) You know, it is what it is. It's part of it's part of the journey. It's part of the experience. Absolutely. Yeah, I I remember. um... I, I don't know. We used to travel so, so much more. And in 2018, my husband and I did this three week trip to Eastern Europe. And um, it's, it's like, you forget what that's like traveling, but like you say, you get used to it, but it's like, you know, you're just, we were just plopped in um, another country. We landed in, yeah. uh, I think we started in, in uh, Budapest and, uh, and you're like, Oh, I don't know any of the, right. I don't know anything like mm-hmm. I, just, I don't know where to go, how to get to the hotel, what's happening. And then after we were traveling for a while, you're like, Oh, okay. You just kind of get, get into the groove. You get, yeah. 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 You figure it out. But at first it is like, Oh, like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. And, and for us, like, you know, our brains are trained right now a little bit to hear German or to respond in German or German pleasantries. But, you know, last week when we we're in the Canary Islands, switching your brain to then think about responses in Spanish is like, ah, I know I took Spanish in high school, but it's just not coming to me. It's coming to me in German or it's coming to me in Italian, but it's not coming to me in Spanish. But, you know, it's, it's OK. Just kind of have to laugh at yourself and move on. And um, with your kids, um, how are they? Are they, is, is, do you think the, the, the way that you've been raising them is creating flexible, little flexible humans where they, where, can they, can they go with the flow or? or I mean, that is the hope is that this is all building flexibility. And I think it has, like they've definitely become better travelers, but they have their moments. And so, you know, kids are kids no matter what, but I do think that they, 
because they have traveled so much and they're used to being on the go and hearing different languages or having food that's not like, you know, their typical food they might have at home. I think that that does eventually start to build up and they, you know, increase their tolerance for being able to handle different situations or or feeling like a little bit like a fish out of water. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think of. I go to the food, right? Like we were yeah. joking. We took the older to to like a really nice restaurant a while ago and we were talking about it. And my youngest son was like, how come I didn't go? And I was like, because I, you would have like screamed if they didn't have chicken. Yeah. I was like talking yeah. about, <laughs> about um, how he is like, he's so inflexible. And, mm-hmm. um, and, and so does that ever happen with the food where it's like, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I I think that is totally like normal. And last week we were at the hotel and it was like, yeah, they want chicken nuggets and spaghetti and pizza, but they also will like try different things. And that's the key is like, I think trying it, like, we don't know what everything is on the menu either. So you're kind of like guessing, Oh, well that kind of sounds like you might like it. So mm-hmm. let's order one for the table and we'll try it. And, you know, maybe get a safe food of chicken nuggets, but try something new also. And then you might find something that they end up liking. And um, a lot of places there's like some form of like nugget or like sausage, right. Mm-hmm. And that's usually a hit or some kind of like pasta or bread item that's uh, mm. normally working for them yeah good I feel better you oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes totally <laughs> and you know, you talked about um, the goal right of having the kids be flexible I mean what else do you think why do you think it's important for um, for kids to travel I think one of the biggest things is is seeing that there is a world outside of themselves their house, their little sphere of, you know, their world. They are not the only people that there are people out there that do things differently than them. And just because we're used to doing it one way, doesn't make a different way wrong. I just think that exposure to seeing other people just really broadens their perspective a lot. Just being able to see outside of their own little world. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is even, you know, I think Jesse and I both really traveled more after we were out of high school and in college. Um, Just, I mean, even, you know, with you living abroad where I think it made me realize like, for me, it's like some of the struggles and we grew up kind of in a small town, small school um, where you get so wrapped up into this little world and mm-hmm. you don't realize that there's this huge world and you're just yeah. so small and there's just so many different people and it's okay to be different because everybody is different yeah. in their own way. And just right. having that more, it, having that exposure to that, um, I can yeah. see being very helpful. And it, it's, it's enlightening, you know, for us too, because you get used to the way that you see things or you're used to seeing things or the way things operate for you and what you're used to. But like, seeing how other people do it, how other countries do it can just kind of open your eyes to things that you might not have thought about before. You know, it's like, you don't know what you don't know. So going out there and seeing it and experience it is really, I I don't know, it's a really great learning experience for them, for us, for everybody, I think. Yeah. Hopefully um, making one more open-minded, right? That like, yeah, for sure. This one way to do the things. Yes. There's a lot of different ways. Uh, right, exactly. Um, and, and accepting it might not, it, that might not be how you want to do it. That's okay, yeah. but that's how they want to do it. And that's also okay. I just think that's really good for everybody to kind of bring into their consciousness. Yeah, absolutely. Or do you know how many places you guys have all gone to or how many countries you've visited? Do you have a, a account? Ooh, um, you know, I'm, I'm not so good at the country counting. Um, I, I'm not a big country counter because I, you know, like we've been to Croatia several times, but there's something new about each experience. And I don't like to say, okay, I've been to that place once uh, okay. and I'm, and I'm yeah. done. Mm-hmm. Um, I, if I had to guess my husband's probably into the forties, I'm probably into the thirties and our kids are probably the older two are probably in the twenties with my younger one trailing at the end, somewhere around there. 
Yeah. So a lot of different experiences and cultures and um, thinking of all of those trips. Do you do you have a, a favorite a favorite one or a favorite story? Um, I think our family's favorite trip, hands down, uh, was the Maldives last year. I mean, that was just oh, like wow. out of the yeah, it was spectacular. It really was like it lives up to the hype. It was so nice. I mean, it was like a true vacation because a lot of these trips that we've done, it's there's a trip and then there's a vacation. So a lot of the stuff we do is trips, you know, it's work, it's hard. Um, but the Maldives was totally like a relaxing vacation. Everybody was happy and entertained and I don't know. It was lovely and magical. But um, like I said, Croatia is another one of my favorite spots to go to. We've been there um, several times and I'm not tired of it yet. Uh, So I enjoy the beaches out there. The water is so beautiful and the little old towns are really cute and charming to walk around in. Um, I'm terrible at picking favorites. I'll sit here and tell you a list for probably 20 hours of all my favorite trips that we've ever done. I mean, in some ways, everyone has its highlight. Yes, yes. They all have something a little different that they bring to the table. So, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to pick favorites. And when you're when you're traveling in terms of food, um, picking a restaurant, um, trying different things, what tools or resources do you use in terms of picking those? Um, right now I'm using Google Maps a lot. Okay. Google Maps has really stepped up its game and has become one of my most used apps. So it's really easy to open it up, see where you are and start clicking the fork and knife icon mm-hmm. to see, you know, you can see pictures of the food, you can see a picture of the menu. So that's been really, really helpful. That's probably the thing I use the most right now. Sometimes TripAdvisor, but more Google. <laughs> Are you, I started using the same. In fact, when I came, I was spending a little bit of time this morning posting pictures because now I'm kind of Mm -hmm. addicted to posting photos with reviews on certain things. Are you finding yourself also squeezing in reviews here and there? Um, I am not, honestly. I love, thank you to everybody who leaves reviews because I do use them all the time, but I am terrible about taking the time to do it myself. (laughs) Shame on me. No, you're busy. You're busy with your social media and like keeping your children happy and fun. Well, I I think about like, have you noticed? um, So, so I studied abroad in Mm -hmm. 2000 and 2000, right? Let me check this. But anyways, I had actual map. You had to have a map. You had a map. And then when we were traveling, I remember we went um, in 2009. My husband and I went to Germany, and we. I had to get a, a, a European SIM card. Yes. That was just, I could get like 30 minutes to call my daughter. Um, yeah. But now it's like when we did our um, Eastern European trip 2018, I did no planning. I mean, we had, yeah. um, we had where we we're going and how we, we had transportation and lodging, but I was just like, bam, at that time I was using TripAdvisor a ton and I did like no planning. Have is Has that changed for you too? Like, because oh yeah plan anymore like you can kind of get there yeah, and we have so many things at our fingertips and our phones now it's it's amazing and now because we have a a german phone plan when we travel within the eu or to the uk our phone still works without having to buy you know extra things and it, the first time we were in germany it was like the same we had to buy a different like sim card or we had to buy like an extra plan to be able to use the phone or we're only using the wi-fi so hopping into a cafe to like find the directions and then like mm-hmm. you know trying to navigate so now it's it's become a lot you know easier to try and figure things out and figure them out on the fly. We're lucky. <laughs> I talk yeah. about that all the time. Like, can you imagine if we had to do this with a paper map and we'd be a, a mess, you know, or finding our books, you know? Yes. We used to carry around a Rick Steves tour book everywhere we went the first time we were in Germany. I mean, that was like the Bible for us. Like, okay, well, Rick says we need to go here next. And we followed that. But, you know, it was a great way to start. And as you get more comfortable, you rely on those things less and less, maybe, or figure out what you want. But at the beginning, I mean, that was like a really big tool that we used. Are you driving to a lot of these destinations or are they? Yeah, that's another great thing about being in Europe is, you know, the countries are smaller. Everything's a lot closer together. So the first year we were here in Garmisch, we drove 
um, almost every single trip we did, except for the Maldives, we we drove. I mean, we could drive all over the place. So, and personally, I mean, the train system here is wonderful. But like for me with the kids, I love driving because I don't have to worry about you know how much I'm bringing. I can shove everything in the car. We have like a roof topper, so if I need extra stuff, it goes up there. And just the time flexibility, not being on like a set train schedule mm-hmm. or flight schedule you know if we have a later morning it's okay if we want to like detour somewhere it's okay so i i do really enjoy the road tripping part of being here that's awesome and i with gps i mean i know people don't understand how amazing yeah. like, <laughs> no. and how my story we had um now we know we have these these friends from australia and i tell this story all the time but anyways they were like we're gonna rent a car and go to and i my husband's mother is austrian and he can speak wonderful german i cannot speak mm-hmm. german so it's it's the castle that i'm not going to try that the cinderella yeah. castle is made after in uh in bavaria oh yes Neuschwanstein. Schweinstein, thank you. My husband yeah. says perfectly I suck and terrible. But anyway, mm-hmm. so they're like, we're gonna run a car, we're like awesome. And our friend was like, I've got a Tom Tom, little navigator, we're gonna be great. And then yeah. they rent the car, and I'm the only one that can drive a manual. And that's oh, all yeah. <laughs> and then we get in the car and he didn't charge the Tom Tom. Oh, yeah. uh, now I've learned like not trust in Troy with what he's it says he's bringing the table but anyways <laughs> have like a map and drive yeah. like in german like anyways the streets if i can remember how the streets end but like if you don't speak german Strauss. yeah it's Strauss, it's Strauss, 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 whatever and you're like yes the name is the same but it'll you know it'll well, say like, if the sign is not happen. there yeah yeah and and so like we ha- i don't i haven't I have no idea how we made it back, uh, yeah. to Munich, but I think now, wow, with satellites and GPS and phones and all yeah. the things, it's just got to be um, like you're saying, kind of almost like no excuse to not not go out there and, and try to explore as much as you can. Yeah, I mean, it, there's definitely a lot of things that are making it a lot easier for us these days. That That is very true. It's still, I, if, if you haven't done it, I totally get that it, it is intimidating. I mean, we were the, we were the same, but um, I just, I feel like starting, you know, baby steps, it's like if you're new to it and you just try and do a day trip, you know, somewhere an hour away, you haven't been. Okay, start with that. And then take a weekend trip somewhere else and then work your way up to flying somewhere else. And then, you know, once you're more comfortable, okay, now try, we're going to plan a trip abroad and, you know, you find a place that works for you guys. That's, you know, relates to your family's interests. And then just, you just kind of have to go for it and do it. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I know it's, um, I'm getting, uh, so inspired. Kids are in sports and, Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know when we're going to be off, you know, like ahead of time. And so I think what I want to do is, um, I don't know what goes into planning. I'd like to know what goes into planning your trip, but I think what I want to do is like go on the Google flights and put like our budget and timeframe and like, spin a wheel and see if we can kind of go somewhere with with yeah. notice i mean what kind of goes into your planning yeah i mean we do similar things i um tend to use Skyscanner over here it operates just like a kayak or a google flights or whatever but i'll put in you know munich and then they have a feature where it's like you can just put everywhere put the dates and put everywhere and see what comes up and see where the cheap flights are. Okay, where have we been? Where haven't we been? What looks good? What looks interesting? And if nothing looks good there, okay, let's try a city close close by to us that's not Munich. Okay, let's try Innsbruck. Actually, this last trip, we flew out of Milan because it was a lot cheaper. So Milan's about a five hour drive. So we drove to Milan, had a day in Milan, like saw the Duomo, hadn't been there before, flew out of there. And, you know, it's an extra step, but it, it worked out and saved us money. And then we got kind of a bonus city too. That's but awesome. yeah, I mean, I think like, you know, almost like there's no bad places, there's no bad trips. So like, just see what you can make work. It doesn't have to be like the most amazing trip you've ever been on in your whole life, but just like go and experience it and have fun and, you know, go from there yeah yeah and and it's like uh you'll you'll come back with with some stories at least right oh yeah for sure (laughs) there's always at least a few good stories out of every trip yeah and and I, i wanted to go back to the maldives what do you think made that were you guys just um i know like very little about it just photos were you just 
like on the water and uh, are the is that where they have the houses floating on the yeah they do have those like the overwater bungalows um we did not do that we got a beach bungalow instead because my youngest is not a swimmer yet and last year he wasn't a swimmer so being on the overwater made me a little nervous like oh my gosh what if he just like wanders out and like falls in the ocean that made me nervous so we did a beach one but yeah they do have those and it's like every little island is a resort almost um so you kind of for the Maldives, it's like you really want to pick your resort, like look very carefully at what they have to offer and the pricing and everything. Because like once you're there, that's like that's like it, kind of it, like that's the destination. So it's not like you're going to like go and see all these things all around. It's more like you're here. You can do some excursions, but you really want to look at like the details of the resort. OK, do you are you able to. um I mean, do you feel like an influencer? Are you able to pull your weight to be like, hey, hi, I want to come to your resort? No. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I probably could start doing more reaching out like that. I don't I don't feel like an influencer. I feel like um, an expat travel mom who likes to share with other people and has found a community in social yeah. media doing so yeah. but no uh, so we're paying for everything yeah. and we you know working those deals from what i've gathered you know that takes a lot of work too to try and set those up and mm-hmm. um you're pitching hotels constantly and trying to work these contracts and um we tend to travel a little bit more like uh not last minute but i'm not very with more my husband's work schedule it's uh, it's just mm-hmm. harder for us to plan out in advance so no we are funding our travels on our own well then you're you're <laughs> i feel like then it's like organic right i mean it's yeah. like organic and authentic real. Yeah. 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 yeah 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 sometimes you never know yeah it, it's like a whole new world that's another new part of travel you know is the social media sphere the influencer sphere mm-hmm. and you know um it, it is an interesting animal that i'm still trying to understand myself <laughs> yeah well i always i was just kind of wonder we had uh, talked to um uh cravings and cocktails lv here mm-hmm. and so we we're asking how does that work when you go to the restaurant you know when you're a food yeah influencer and she said that they'll they'll call her yeah. right and and have her like you know comp the whole comp the meal or yeah. she'll if there's a place she wants to go to she'll call and say hey check out my social media and then um so you'll have to be at no cost so i was just wonder and yeah. some people um and a lot of people do do those things yeah. you know they reach out to hotels and they're offered a, a few nights comp stay or paid you know for their photography services their videography services so that's definitely a real thing that i just haven't quite um yeah. well i mean it sounds like that's how i am i don't know i don't like people to tell me what to do when i want to do whatever i want <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah i just but i want to go here and i want to do it at this yeah. day there and so it's just simpler especially again three humans managing the humans and everything on top of managing all the little people yeah Yeah. what are some countries or cities that you Mm -hmm. have been to or that come to mind that really um were are like underrated or like you kind of didn't even want to go but you were so surprised and had such a wonderful time um well we went to istanbul over thanksgiving and that blew us out of the water Mm. like we were we loved it we were super just like amazed by it thought it was so cool just it was a really awesome experience so that one i wouldn't say we had like bad expectations of istanbul but like it it really exceeded our our expectations um i had a similar feeling about lisbon when we went the first time but that was years ago i think it's become a little bit more popular but lisbon was was a really pleasant surprise. We really enjoyed Lisbon and Portugal. Um, Montenegro is another one. Mm. Um, loved that also. It was very similar to Croatia. Beautiful water. Um, less expensive than Croatia. Very friendly people. It was lovely. Um, where did, oh, we, and I'm not going to pronounce it right, but honestly, Slovenia has a lot of mm wonderful things to offer it might not be the first place people think about when they think of europe but it is so beautiful and we just went to this mountain town i'm gonna 
hope that it's close to Krajinska Gora and the Soka River Valley. Um, just absolutely stunning. And Slovenia is also a little bit less expensive than some of the other um, more Western countries. There's, there's a lot out there. Oh, the Dolomites in Italy. The Dolomites mm -hmm. are like mind blowing. I mean, we live in the mountains. So like we see, we're lucky to see beautiful mountains every day. But like those mountains were like, wow, it was really mm -hmm. impressive. Where the, is that north of, uh, or east of Milan or where? where would the yeah, it, it, yeah. So it's like part of the Italian Alps. So it's like northern Italy. Um, it's yeah. about, depending on where you go, I would say it's about two hours, two to three hours from Garmisch, maybe two hours from Innsbruck, a couple hours from Milan. You could probably get there fairly easily from Venice also. Hmm. But yeah. Really, really beautiful there. How do you balance, you know, maybe, I don't know if it's balancing or not, but I guess what I'm thinking about is having active kids, right? So mm -hmm. the idea of doing a, you know, an audio led tour or like a tour guide, and that's not something that kids want to do because they're more hands-on or they want to do stuff. Yeah. How do you balance that when you are traveling to some of these places? We're just kind of starting to dip our toe back into the world of like tours and stuff. Okay. We kind of took a break from doing that when we first had the kids. Um, so actually, while we were in Istanbul, we did a food tour. So we and we did it with a, a guide that we got just for us. So it was just us. We didn't have to worry about like ruining anybody else's experience or we could kind of go at our own pace. And it's it's food. Right. So they're eating the whole time. Um, so I thought that was really good. And we also got audio I, I couldn't believe how interested they were in these audio guides um okay. we went to this palace but I, I, you know my oldest was probably listening to some of it the youngest just wanted to have it just to like have something um and then one we did something in Greece which was like an iPad 3D tour um, and they really liked that because they could like hold the iPad up and it would show them what the ancient palace would have looked oh, like. Cool. So we're just kind of like experimenting with these things, right? Like, okay, well, let's try this 3D tour, see how it goes. And then there always has to be the balance of like, okay, we're doing this thing where you have to pay attention. Now we need to hit a playground. Now okay. we need to, you know, go to the beach for a little while. So building in that time for them to just kind of turn turn off the part where they have to like you know really behave and they can just be kids for a little while or you know bribery with gelato that you normally helps too oh yeah <laughs> i need you I to pay sure. attention to this and then we'll get to idea well, but even like finding playgrounds so um when we think about Europe, I don't think about mm. playgrounds. Like I think in the oh, U.S. there's the like playgrounds parks are amazing everywhere. here. Yeah. So how does how do you find them? Is it just um, Google or? Yeah. It, uh, or I if I see things like on Instagram because now I you know I follow a lot of traveling families. I see something on Instagram, I'll save it in my Instagram collections, and then I go right to Google Maps, find it, and save it. Okay. Um. So it's so it's there. Um, but, you know, if you just kind of learn the word or go on to Google Translate and mm -hmm. whatever country you're in, translate it to that language. So like in German, it's Spielplatz. So I can, if I'm in Germany or Austria, put in Spielplatz and Google will pop it up. Mm, okay. Which is really handy. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I think it's like with the tours, it sounds like depends on what you're kind of doing. I remember we went, yeah. we took our older to to Europe and we did the... Is it like the Churchill Museum and the Churchill War Room? Yes. Uh -huh. And they were five, I don't know, they, were, they, were, they were six and eight or six and nine. And they were, I couldn't believe how amazing they were. Yeah. But, sometimes yeah. they surprise you, like yeah. with how engaged that they will be. Yeah. yeah. And, and then Kelly and I did the Frank Lloyd Wright tour. Yeah. 15 year olds. And then her nine year old were like, let's get out, out of here. But it makes mm -hmm. me think about when I hear you talking, it's because it was like one building. You know what I mean? It was just like, one it's so hard to like not if like, you're in an off mood that day too like you know that might be it or if they're just like feeling extra cooperative that day then it's like working and everybody's jamming it's just you know yeah. like kids kids are kids and they're kids whether you're on vacation or whether you're at home so i was telling myself that beckett's probably gonna be an architect he was very ungrateful mm -hmm. and didn't want to be there but maybe <laughs> i'm putting having it's having a profound effect on him right. that i'll never know until he's like 20. you never know what <laughs> seeds are being planted in there right you just never know <laughs> 
That's right. That's right. And um, when they're adults someday, they might say, oh my gosh, I remember this awesome museum and tour we did when we were kids. And then you'll be totally vindicated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I, I should keep a diary when I'm like, no, you cried yes. the whole time and didn't want to be there. But we forget about yes. this bad thing. That's why we have more yeah, than one child. Do. You just keep you do. You think about the happy times and mm-hmm. forget about the pain and suffering of 100%. labor. 100%. Yeah, you um, remember the happy memories and forget about all the yeah. frustrating parts. Yeah. What do you do? Like, how do you pivot? Or do you have recommendations or tools? Like, let's say you kind of created this itinerary for the day mm-hmm. and and someone's not right. One of the kids is just mm-hmm. not having it or it's not going. Like, what, what do you do? Um, once again, insert playground, insert snack break, insert okay. just maybe like some downtime at the hotel or finding a bench to sit on. I mean, sometimes they are just like need a few minutes to run around a a square and chase pigeons. Like sometimes you just have Mm -hmm. to like know when everybody, like they need the breather and you also need the breather. And so after a little bit of downtime or everybody can kind of recollect, then you can maybe try again. But I also think a lot of it is expectation management. Like I've learned that for our family, I would not put more than one to maybe two like big ticket items on the schedule for a day, because then it just ends up being too much, too much like stress trying to get from one place to another rushing. It's just not worth it. So just lowering the expectations and slowing it down a little and and knowing that we need that time for them to play or goof off or go to a toy store or whatever it is you know do a little souvenir shopping or something yeah I I think I've been failing traveling this whole time and I feel like I wish I had these tips. I know that sounds like so simple, but it's, we went to DC last year and I look back, I need to really just prep my husband because basically what happens is, is he gets annoyed and he's agitated and thinks that all the kids are the worst and don't yeah. know how to go. And so but that I, still happens to us. Like we're always going places that happens to us. I think that's just normal, right? That's just part of like the parenting experience. If we're like if I were like, okay, babe, like let's do, cause he wants to travel. Like my husband wants to travel. Like we did when we were twenties. Yeah. And so now the kids are older. We're trying these new trips and he is like, let's see all of the Smithsonian's, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, and it's like, okay, this is what, this is what the kids need. This is what we need. And yeah. kind of one to two big ticket things, a big yeah. like seas a day, finding part time snack time, all yeah. the kind of things that we have to put that in the itinerary. And I think it's like, yeah. definitely have not been kind of planning for that. So I love that. And like having the conversations, you know, now we can, our kids are getting to the point where we can involve them a little bit more before it's just all me making the plans and we're going where we're going. But now if I can kind of throw them the bone of like okay well what what is the thing that you want to do okay well sometimes we're going to do things that you want to do but then sometimes we're going to do things that mommy and daddy want to do and I also need you to like respect the things that I want to do and not like sour it by you know throwing fits the whole time because you wouldn't want me to do that when you're you know in the M&M store (laughs) or whatever it is yeah absolutely Totally. I love that. I think that is good. I mean, do you think, is there any advice or I know um, we're talking about kind of like, what's the best advice you've received just about living abroad? Um, For living abroad, the biggest thing that normally sticks in my head is, especially when you first get somewhere is say yes to everything. Like Anything I'm invited to, I kind of make the rule for myself. I say yes, even if it's somebody inviting me that I think I'm not really going to, you know, jive with. I say yes, because then I might meet somebody else there that I do jive with or get invited to something else. And you you have to kind of put yourself out there because you need to find your people um, to kind of get through it. You know, being isolated is just going to kind of compound your feelings. It's not, it's not good. You know, you need to have people that you can go out with, have your own things. That's another thing, like finding my own thing. Cause like we live abroad based on my husband's job. You know, he has his work and he has his work community and his accomplishments. Like I, I have to find something for me. Otherwise, you know, I'm not going to be happy. So those are the things that I try to keep in my head when we first go someplace. And 
like with anything that practice, you know, now I've done it a few times. So I know that there's cycles of like, it's really exciting at first and everything is new and oh my gosh, like look at all this cool stuff. And then eventually you're going to hit like the lull of where you start to hit the frustrations and like, I don't like this. This is different and not what, you know, not how I want it to be, or I don't understand this. And, but knowing that those cycles are normal and that you will like go through it and also come out of it, it's been really helpful also. Mm -hmm. That, I think that totally aligns with what we talk so much about and chasing brighter, right? Is it's like prioritizing your needs, knowing what you yeah. need. And then what's coming out so much and, and what we've we've been researching and looking into is human connection. Like you're talking about yeah. finding your tribe. Um, yes. Our book, book for um, for April is, uh, what's it called? Like the Good Life. It's like the longest study of mm -hmm. happiness, of human happiness. Yeah. And um, they are talking about like, if, if you had to summarize the 84 year study, the number one thing is healthy relationships. Like if you yeah. want to be we need to have healthy connection, healthy relationships. And so um, it sounds like, and when you were talking about not skiing, you have your moms. So is that <laughs> what gets you going is, is finding your tribe? Yeah, hundred percent. Right. You know, finding people that you can align with, that you can go out and do things with, you know, I, I'm in the minority here for sure of, of of non-skiers but there are other people who are like me and they don't want to do that and we have other interests and that's okay and my friends who like to ski you know we don't have to ski together but we can hike together when the weather you know is getting nicer like now but definitely like finding those in and it doesn't take a ton but you know one or two quality connections just really makes all the difference Mm. We always say that like when, after we leave a place, it's like the hardest part about leaving is saying goodbye to the people. It's always the people. Like that's the hardest part about leaving the U.S. is leaving the people. That's the hardest part every time you have to move is like saying goodbye to the people every time. Yeah. Yeah. And how long have you been at, where you're at now in Germany? We've been here for about a year and a half. Okay. Okay. And right before that is when we were in um, Tbilisi, Georgia, and we were there for about two years. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. And is this, do you have any um, kind of foresight into how long you guys will be living abroad or? Um, right now, we would probably tell you as, as long as we can keep making it work. Um, we know that we will probably be moving um, in the summer of 24. We don't know where but we're going somewhere. We can't stay here forever. As lovely as that would be, we've got to move on. So, um, yeah, I mean, if we can make something else work overseas, we will definitely take that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. We talked, Kelly and I moved, um, a lot growing up. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. And, and we talk about it, like looking back, right. What skill do we have to be able to small talk and make new friends? Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it has to be, we're flexible um, humans and yeah. uh, we can be thrown somewhere and make it work, you know, yeah. and uh, although it probably, it caused probably a little, a little bit of trauma on our end. Cause it wasn't always, um, you know, that we would uh, know we, had in mind what was happening. It was but, a journey. And yeah. I mean, I don't know if we were aware of it at the time, but now being an adult and, you know, Lindsay, I don't know how you feel about this, but you learn about yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. And part of it is that journey of like learning about yourself. And then that helps me be a better friend or find the right relationships just because I yeah. kind of start to know what I like and don't like and whatever that is. And yeah. also just being outgoing. Right. Learning how to talk to strangers. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a skill and a good one to have. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Well, thank, I'm so excited we were able to connect. I know we've yes, got me too. Kind of time zones happening. So yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Staying up late because you're up yes. past so no because it, we're, we're, you know? it's, it's about nine o'clock now. So it's not too late. But yes, it was always the juggle to try and connect with people back in the States now. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank yeah. you so much. Yes. For, thank you. Uh, so thank you much. guys. I appreciate it. It was fun. This was awesome. Thank yes. you. Thanks for listening and joining us today. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Chasing Brighter or on our blog, ChasingBrighter.com.